The immiseration thesis is the crux of Karl Marx's philosophy of capitalist development. He says that there will come a time when the proletariat is so immiserated that it has no choice. It will literally either revolt or it will die. Now, obviously, we in the first world, and this is where Maoist third worldists get their notion that there's no revolutionary potential among our proletariat. We are not there yet. The global capitalism as a totality is not there yet and has not been there. Um, as I mentioned previously, the Russian Revolution, the Chinese Revolution, these were peasant revolutions driven by whatever internal systems of development drove peasant revolutions. Now, this here that I'm about to read to you comes from Capital Chapter 25. It's the famous immiseration thesis. And I want to explain it because it's not really well explained by most Marxists, if they're even aware of it, and they're typically not. Okay, we saw in part four, when analyzing the production of relative surplus value, that within the capitalist system, all methods for raising the social productive powers of labor are put into effect at the expense of the individual worker. That all means for the development of production undergo a dialectical inversion so that they become means of domination and exploitation of the producers. They distort the worker into a fragment of a man. They degrade him to the level of an appendage of a machine. They destroy the actual content of his labor by turning it into a torment. They alienate him from the intellectual potentialities of the labor process in the same proportion as science is incorporated in it as an independent power. They deform the conditions under which he works, subject him during the labor process to a despotism the more hateful for its meanness. They transform his lifetime into working time and drag his wife and child beneath the wheels of the juggernaut of capital. But all methods for the production of surplus value are at the same time methods of accumulation, and every extension of accumulation becomes conversely a means for the development of those methods. It follows, therefore, that in proportion, as capital accumulates, the situation of the worker, be his payment high or low, must grow worse. Now, this bears some uh, deception. So, Marx talks about a dialectical inversion. What does that mean? What it means is that a new innovation is introduced onto the market that seems to have the potential to liberate the proletarian from his misery. Um, and, and not even necessarily a product, but a new social form. For example, the workers' cooperative, which many market socialists today bill as being the solution to the social question. You know, and, and at first it's introduced and it, is revol it has a revolutionary effect on capitalist relations, but it doesn't transcend them. And over time, it grows to just be an integrated part of that system. Um, Mondragon Corporation that Richard Wolff holds up as you know the example to which all is an industry should aspire is n not revolutionary. It was formed by Jesuits, you know, who felt motivated by a moral mission um, to to free the worker. There's nothing intrinsically revolutionary about anything that the left politically is advocating for, and there is a lot in it that will eventually become the basis for future developments within capitalism. Um, free labor. Abraham Lincoln, you know, he freed the slaves, and this is objectively a good thing to the extent that we assign moral values to this process. Um, but it just had the effect as Apologists for Southern slavery, like George Fitzhugh, were aware it would of immis you know immiserating them by subjecting the former slaves, now freedmen, to wage labor. Um, it doesn't end. It doesn't end within capitalism. Uh, and any socialist who claims that they have a one-shot solution to these problems is a fucking liar. Um, because it's a process of historical development. And it will eventually end. There will eventually be a revolution. And a lot of people who agree with me on the basics of these things, uh, they always halt before the idea of revolution. They always find a reason to say, well, Marx is right about X, Y, and Z, but, but he's wrong about revolution. He's not wrong about revolution. You can see the outlines if you know where to look. Um, 
the Missouri Shift Diesels. Everything gets converted into a money making machine. Your video game, like, like you can't engage in leisure anymore without paying, you know, fees. I'm not a gamer. I don't recall. I don't remember exactly what the term for it is. Um, but you have to pay to play. And it wasn't like that when I was growing up. Uh, you know, there, there wasn't, you know, you had leisure time. This is increasingly not the case. I'd be interested to see where public libraries are in 20 years. Um, there's little that we can do to stop it. I, the, the most that I can do is to try to make people aware of these intricacies within Marxist theory. Um, BlackRock buying these houses. This is a very slow process. They only own, I think, like one half of 1% of the housing stock in the United States at the moment. But as hedge funds, and it's not just going to be BlackRock, it's going to be all these, um, you know, all, all these limited liability companies. As they move in and they buy up single occupant housing and convert those into rental properties, um, that's going to become the standard. Uh, Europe is already much more developed. Uh, Germany, France, these countries all rely on the rental model, um, mostly to individual landlords right now, but again, hedge funds are getting into it. And this process of monetizing the whole of existence, this is the process of immiseration. And very few working class people want to live in it. Um, and they know what's happening to them. They don't need to be preached at. They're aware of it uh, to some extent. Um, but they're not going to buy into the left's solutions because the only solutions that the left has on offer make the problem worse. Workers' cooperatives are a perfect example of this. Um, now, there's some value to those. And I would imagine that 20, 30 years from now, as the co-op becomes a thing, that initially people will feel liberated by this. But over time, it'll turn into the same sort of structure as everything else. Communism is the abolition of labor and nothing else. It's not the sanctification of labor. It's not the integration of oppressed minorities into the capitalist machine. It's not any of that. It is the abolition of labor. And unless you do away with labor, it's only going to get worse.